What's up guys? We're back in Bangkok, Thailand's capital city. We find a ton of awesome snakes, so stick around. Alright, we've just arrived at a secret location here in Bangkok that's said to have a lot of reticulated pythons, a lot of dogs too, as by the sound of it. We're gonna have a walk around, see if we can find any, and we'll turn the camera back on if we do. We conducted our search by walking along an elevated boardwalk above city canals, checking for snakes both in the water and along the bushes on the side. For such a highly populated area with houses all around us, it's amazing how many snakes still survive in high populations. All right, we're out here looking for water snakes and we found a water snake, not the one that we're particularly looking for tonight, but this is a very pretty little skull-faced water snake, Homolops bucata. And as this, well, they're smaller, they're quite more heavily banded and as they grow larger, they kind of lose that banding, it fades out a little. So in these species, the small ones are actually a fair bit prettier than the adults. Thank God someone else calls it by that name. All right, so while this is a cool snake, it's not what we're here for. We're just gonna put this one back and continue our search. If we find what we're looking for, you'll see. It'll be a very unique snake. The skull-faced water snake hunts by hooking its tail on vegetation and waits in ambush for fish or other small aquatic animals to swim past. This species is common in Thailand, and we saw several individuals on this particular night. All right, we're rolling. All right, so Rupert just caught another snake. This is actually a very special, extremely unusual snake to find. This is Erpaton tentacularum, also known as the tentacle snake. They have these sort of protrusions from the front of their face, which is where their common name came from. All right, and what are the tentacles for? Some people used to think that the tentacles are actually used to lure in fish, but that's not possible because they don't actually have control over the tentacles. What they're actually used for is to send shock waves and stuff from fish in their surrounding area, where they, which they use to predict where the fish will be, which is their specialized diet, what they feed on. And it also massively helps them with hiding and blending into these swampy areas where there's a lot of debris that have fallen into the, wa into the water. And as you can see, they look almost exactly like a random stick or something. And they don't move a lot either. They're usually just sat in one position, not moving and they're literally almost impossible to see if you don't specifically recognize the texture of scales. And that's probably why they're so rare, right? Yeah, and that's why they're said to be so rare. Barely any herpers who actually go herping in Southeast Asia end up finding these, but if you can find the right habitat, they're actually not a rare snake at all. They're just very difficult to find. And you need to know where to look. And what kind of habitat do you find them in? Uh, you find them in these little water areas, anywhere where there's like water that's preferably flowing or moving slowly. You can find these along the banks or in the middle sometimes when there's like patches of lots of lily pads or aquatic plants that provide a lot of structures just below the surface of the water where they'll actually sit in it and wait for small fish to pass by which they eat. This awesome species is unlike any other snake on earth, having unique features and hunting strategies. Definitely a very special snake that few people are lucky enough to find. What's most impressive is how this unique species has a thriving population within a highly polluted urban environment where you'd think most animals would suffer. But now, on to our next finds.
Alright, so these bronzebacks, they're actually tree snakes. They like to go up in the trees hunting for calotes lizards, and then at night they just go onto a branch that's sticking out and they curl up on the branch and sleep there, just very loosely on top of a stick. And Chris just spotted another one. Third one. And there you go, he's got it. This is a painted bronzeback, Dendrolaphus pictus. These are very slender, diurnal, very fast and defensive snakes during the day. Even this one you can see is opening his mouth just a little in defense. And they also have this blue skin in between their scales and the neck, which they'll use as a threat display. They basically inflate their neck, and you can see these blue scales in between the skin. Alright, what's that, David? Alright, so this is a medium-sized retake I just pulled up from down there. The reason we didn't get the catch on, on video was actually because it was underneath this boardwalk just sticking out its head from the side, and it was about to pull back, so I just had to like dive and grab its head. And then lift it up onto the boardwalk here. It's relatively cold, and it's calming down relatively well. Yeah, it looks, uh, yeah. looks really calm. <laughs> it's a beautiful mid-sized one. They get a lot bigger than this, and they're very common around here as well. This is one of probably many we're still going to find. Um, but this was the first one since arriving here in Bangkok. Beautiful snake. I hope I don't get bit, because they do have rather large teeth, and they tend to hold on when they bite, so... Not something that's necessary, although it would be not too painful actually. The bites from these, like their saliva, it makes you bleed a lot, but it's not particularly painful. It's just like a whole bunch of like small microscopic needle puncture. It's kind of like a tattoo. As you hear that dog, isn't it crazy how many pythons there are here? Yeah, and that's another thing that they like, probably why they're doing so well here in Bangkok, because there's so many dogs and large pythons, when they reach like three and a half, four meters or bigger, they'll actually be able to start eating dogs quite readily. So if you move to Bangkok, um, keep an eye on your puppy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of stories that I've heard from people I know even, who've had their um, dogs and cats eaten by retics just in their backyard at night or even during the day sometimes. Yeah, I think the amount of like trash there is around really attracts a huge amount of rats for them to feed on too. Yeah. This one is surprisingly calm for a wild one. Usually the wild ones, when they get to about this size, they're very defensive and they don't mellow out too fast compared to like some other species of snake. Yeah, they've got these amazing red, orangey eyes with that perfect elliptical pupil. I really think retics have some of the prettiest eyes of any snake. So you said they get pretty big. Would you say they pose any danger to humans in Bangkok? Well, these species have actually in Indonesia been reported to have eaten people before. But in order to be able to eat people, they have to be very large specimens. And even some of those would have trouble with the width of some people's shoulders. So while people can be eaten by the species, it's not something that you would be, have to be concerned or worried about because only the very biggest specimens would be able to do that, and even that is rather unlikely. There's a bike coming, by the way. Which is just a demonstration of uh, the population that there is here. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so what did he think of the snake, David? He was a bit wary of going past me. He at first didn't want to come past me while I was holding the snake there, but we told him that there's nothing to worry about, so he was eventually willing to quickly sneak past. Yeah, I was hoping he didn't freak out and just plant his bike right into the river. <laughs> What's more dangerous, um, pythons or the water in these uh, rivers? Yeah, man, I think the water around here would definitely affect you with several nasty things. 
All right, so we've just looked at it a bit. Josh was actually really excited because he's been trying to find these for a while, but has had quite bad luck with them despite them being relatively common around here. Yeah, I really hope we can find some more, maybe bigger ones. Boop it. Wait, we won't hold it like that. He's getting defensive towards me. <laughs> All right, time to get. Okay, I'm gonna not want to get bit in the face. All right, do you want to put it down your right hand side? Yeah. Bye bye. All right, so I just spotted a even smaller retic than we found before, just up in the very top of this tree here. I'm gonna go over there see if I can't climb up and somehow manage to get this one down. I'm thinking I'm going to try to just bend the tree down and maybe Josh could grab it. Yes. All right, go over there. And um, I'm going to just start climbing and the tree, will probably, the tree will probably break or... I don't want it on my face though. No, it should be fine. Josh, you want to take the camera? Oh. There we go. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh yeah, this is a super bright wow. one. Wow, I've just got so many flies and debris from the tree on me. It's okay, I'll get him, I'll get him. Oh, it's beautiful. Very nippy. I think he's a yellow-headed one. Yes, he is. Wow. Oh wow, and look, he has a massive tick on the right, on the front of his face. Let's get that off. Yeah, we're gonna actually do him a favor and remove this tick. Oh look, he's also got a missing tail tip which has a big tick on it. Let me see. What will happen a lot of the time if they have injuries, there's like a lack of scales on that area, which is very easy for ticks to get attached to. So I'm just gonna... How did it lose his tail? Make sure you dig him with your nails. Yeah, I'm just gonna remove these ticks. Right, so I'm gonna carefully restrain him by the head so that we can remove these ticks. If you zoom in here. Just gonna carefully hold his mouth shut and remove the tick. I see blood on the nose. Yeah, there's a little bit of blood coming out from in between the scales where the tick was. So we really have we up. really have done him a favor there. Yeah. Once the tick is removed, it'll heal up very fast though. Won't be a big deal for the snake at all. Within like one shed, you won't be able to see that spot anymore. Oh look, there's another tick here. So. And ticks always seem to like lodge onto these uh, large snakes. Yeah, pythons are very susceptible to getting ticks, more so than these smaller colubrid snakes that we're finding. The smaller size retics, they generally calm down a lot faster and a lot easier than the big ones because the larger they get, the more they develop that instinct to defend themselves. Usually when you find like hatchlings, they're just completely tame and you can pick them up. At this size, they usually try to bite a little bit in the beginning but they generally calm down fairly fast. You're just a snake charmer, man. Yeah, it's magic. It's amazing how within just like a matter of like two years, they can literally like multiply in size by like eight or 10, at least in weight and girth. Yeah, the, the growth is really rapid. Especially during the like first couple years, they have to race to get to a size where they're too big for most predators. And then they start to grow slower in length and start to put on more weight. That's why smaller retics are usually very skinny, but very long. I'd say most of them probably die before they get to two meters, you know? Yeah, of course. They have a lot of predators They lay age. like 30 eggs or so per litter and only probably like, what, Up to like survive till adulthood? Yeah. And they actually continue to grow pretty fast until they get to around four meters when they start to uh, fatten out and they sort of, their growth lengthwise becomes very slow. It kind of depends what prey they're eating. If they're eating, if they're just eating rats and like small cats, they'll probably stop at around four meters. But if they're in the forest, natural forest, or somewhere where there's a lot of dogs and whatnot around, yeah, you deer. know, they eat pigs and deer in the forest, they can get upwards of six meters and even up to like eight sometimes, which is crazy. All right, so we've just played with it a bit, taken some photos. Now we're gonna just put him right back up in the same tree where we found it and get on our way, it's late. So we've just found retic number three for tonight. This is by far the smallest one, probably only a few months old. Um, yeah, very calm. Oh, 
just as I said, very calm. Um, <laughs> the retics seem to be getting smaller through the night. Yeah, they are. And Next one we find is going to be literally a hatchling. Yeah. How old would you say this one is? Maybe three or four months. Depending on how much it's been eating though, but at this size. It's already <laughs> significantly longer than a hatchling as well, but this one's also very thin, so I would guess like four months. Maximum five. Yeah, it's crazy how many there are around here. Oh yeah, for sure. There's probably like hundreds just within like close vicinity to us. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's let him go. All right, just over here? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll just put him in this tree here. As juveniles, these retics are far more arboreal, and then as they gain mass, it becomes like more annoying for them to be in trees, so they kind of tend to be on the ground more when they reach a decent Yeah, size. the small one we found a minute ago was in a tree, and me and Chris spotted this one up in the bamboo as well. All right, so we've had an extremely productive night. We found three reticulated pythons, some beautiful water snakes, and of course the tentacle snake, which was our main goal for the area. Now it's getting kind of late, so we're gonna head back to the main road, see if we can get a cab, head back to our hotel and call it a night. And that was the end of another wicked night of herping in Bangkok. Not only did we see our main target species, the tentacle snake, but got three reticulated pythons as well. If you like the new videos we got coming out every week, drop the video a damn like to let us know and hit that notification bell so you don't miss next week's video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to follow David's feed on Instagram for video updates, link in the description, and a big shout out to Josh and Chris for helping us with the video. Their links are in the description too. Peace.